It had been two and a half years since I had left Kirtland to preach the gospel. My brethren then in Kirtland were poor, despised, and looked upon by the pomp of Babylon with disdain and disgrace. But how changed was the scene before me now. A magnificent house of God that speaks in language loud as thunder that the saints will prosper in spite of Babylon. For his temple stands in honor of his kingdom on earth. That sail in heaven along. Alleluia, Alleluia. I I'm sorry if I've disturbed you. You have a beautiful voice. And yours too, sir. My name is Wilfred Woodruff. Of course, Brother Woodruff. Have we met? No. And you are? Very cold. If you'll excuse me now, I... No, wait. Please. May I call on you? You already have. No, I mean perhaps tomorrow. Perhaps with a proper introduction, Mr. Woodruff. Good night. Good night. That beautiful vision I was later to discover was a certain Miss Phoebe Whitmore Carter, the local school teacher. We were properly introduced a short time later, and after a lengthy courtship of two and a half months, we were joined in holy matrimony on the 13th of April, 1837. Within the year, the Kirtland Temple had fallen into the hands of apostates. Many of the saints were forced from the village and the temple was desecrated. Later, it was even for a time reduced to housing cattle and barn animals for the winter. Within a decade, another temple was once again erected to the Lord in the city of Nauvoo, Illinois. A brief haven for the saints from the ravages of persecution. It was dedicated in May of 1846, amid the forced exodus of the entire city of Nauvoo. Prophet Joseph and his brother Hiram had been murdered and their testimony sealed with their blood. Within 18 months of its dedication, the Nauvoo Temple was destroyed by fire. The spiteful work of an arsonist. I saw where our paper published a story about it. The treatment of your people in those days was inexcusable. It seemed the harder we labored to obey the commandments of our Lord, the more determined our enemies became. Temple sites were dedicated earlier in Independence and in far west Missouri, even Spring Hill, overlooking a beautiful valley in the Grand River, perhaps the most heavenly place I've ever seen. <laughs> Wanton hostilities would not allow us to tarry long enough to even begin work on those temples. They will have to wait for future generations. One would think you would have wearied at the thought of raising yet another temple. Yes, I remember some voiced their concerns. Five years after arriving in the valley, the construction of the wall around Temple Block was still uncompleted. Work on the temple itself had not even begun.
away. <coughs> I wish you would allow me to exchange desks with you. You you have more need of the warmth than I. I prefer the view from the window. <coughs> Besides, President Young will be calling on us this morning, and I would like to be forewarned. He wants to discuss the plans for the new temple. Says it's time to push forward with the work. William. Yes. Did you hear me? President Young wants to begin work on the new temple. Well, it's, it's wonderful news. I. I thought you would welcome it. Some of the old timers. Some of the old timers. I've heard them talk about the new temple. Yeah. They say the moment we lay the cornerstone of the temple, all hell will be turned loose upon us and and we will be driven right out of the valley. Just as we have from every temple site since the church was founded. That may be true, Brother Wolf. President. So much for my watchful eye. But once the temple work has begun, there will also be an increase in blessings and a power to overcome all evil. It, it wasn't my intention to suggest that. I know, William, but remember this. Men and women grow mighty under temple service. We must build this temple that the Lord might reveal the ordinances of exaltation to his people. And we must start today. May I use your slate? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Now, brethren, let me show you what has been revealed to me regarding this noble temple. There will be three towers on the east, representing the Melchizedek priesthood. And three similar towers on the west, representing the Aaronic priesthood. Soon thereafter, President Young called Truman Angel to go to Europe to study the works of the master builders of the past centuries. From the Nelson Monument in Dublin, Ireland, and the old castles on the Isle of Man, to the ancient cemeteries of Paris and magnificent houses of worship and government in London, Truman spent months contemplating, drawing, and absorbing the rich architectural legacy of the European continent. He literally spent days studying St. Paul's Cathedral, the masterpiece and final resting place of England's greatest architect, Sir Christopher Wren.